Vitaly Klitschko was generally regarded for a long time as the superior of the Klitschko brothers. He was a three-time heavyweight champion with a career that spanned almost two decades, and many people would argue that he would be undefeated if not for bad luck and injuries. Nonetheless, he had a fascinating career. Nordic Warrior here, welcome back to my retrospective boxing series. It's been a long time since I made one of these and I wanted to get back on track as soon as possible. So Vitaly Klitschko turned professional in 1996, after a stellar, long, successful amateur career that included a very successful kickboxing career. Most of the early fights of his pro career took place in Germany. He was signed with Universe and Box Promotion, who at the time were the biggest promoters in Eastern Europe, and fighters from all over the continent would travel over to sign with them. He won the vast majority of his early fights by knockout inside of two rounds, and was developing a reputation as a massive knockout puncher. The first real test of his career came against the American veteran Dickie Ryan for the WBO Intercontinental title. Vitaly won the fight by a fifth round knockout. He went on to win the European title with a first round KO over Francisco Spinelli. He defended the title once, and then got his first world title shot against the reigning champion from Britain, Herbie Hyde. Herbie Hyde was known for being a smaller, more finessed heavyweight. He was known for his cruiserweight speed and his devastating knockout power, with most of his fights ending early. He had one defeat, which was a seventh round stoppage loss to Riddick Bowe, and he was a sizable favourite to beat Vitaly. The fight took place in London and turned out to be a complete mismatch. Vitaly knocked Hyde out in the second round after scoring two knockdowns. He had two successful title defences against Ed Mahone and Obed Sullivan, winning both fights by knockout before taking on Chris Bird. In a shocking upset, Vitaly appeared to be winning the fight comfortably, and he sustained a shoulder injury in the fight and was pulled out after the 10th round, essentially giving Bird the victory. Vitaly faced a lot of criticism for not finishing the fight, and many boxing fans and media pundits, particularly in the West, basically wrote him off as a coward and a fraud. Interestingly, his little brother Vladimir, went on to immediately avenge his defeat, schooling Chris Bird to win back the title for the Klitschko family. After recovering from his injury, Vitaly's first fight back was for the vacant European title against the tough German Timo Hoffmann. It was the first fight of Vitaly's career that went the distance, and he showcased quite good stamina and boxing skills over 12 rounds. After some knockout victories over Olin Norris, Vaughn Bean, Ross Purity, and Larry Donald, he went over to America and got a shot at the heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis. Vitaly took the fight on two weeks notice and was a replacement opponent for Kirk Johnson. He went on to give Lennox one of his toughest fights, winning most of the rounds and outboxing him. Unfortunately for Vitaly, he received a horrible cut midway through the fight and while still clearly winning the fight on points, the corner had no choice but to pull him out. Vitaly lobbied for an immediate rematch, but Lennox decided to retire and vacate the title. Vitaly made a comeback later that year with a second round knockout victory over Kirk Johnson back over in the States. He then got a shot at the vacant WBC world title against South African Corey Sanders. The fight was personal for Vitaly since Corey Sanders had previously knocked out Vitaly's little brother in two rounds, and it gave Vitaly extra motivation to win the fight. He gave Sanders an absolute beating and stopped him in the 8th round. Interestingly, Vitaly was hurt in this fight, and it's the only time I've ever seen him genuinely hurt in his career, showing that Corey Sanders was a legitimate puncher. After beating Sanders, Vitaly was in negotiation for a fight against heavyweight legend Mike Tyson. However, in Tyson's tune-up fight, he was knocked out in a huge upset by the Brit Danny Williams. So Vitaly chose to face Danny Williams instead. In an embarrassingly one-sided fight, he stopped Williams in the 8th round, after scoring multiple knockdowns. Vitaly was then in training for a fight against former champion Hazim Rachman. During his training camp, his shoulder injury from the bird fight resurfaced and Vitaly had to step away from boxing for a while. After a 4-year retirement, he made a comeback against the now WBC champion, the Nigerian nightmare and knockout artist Samuel Peter. In a dominant performance, he gave Peter one of the most one-sided beatings I've ever seen, and forced Peter's corner to pull him out after the 8th round. It was clear at this point that Vitaly had improved his technical skills, but he was nowhere near as fast or as athletic as he was before his first retirement. 
He had a ninth round knockout victory over former cruiserweight champion Juan Carlos Gomez, then went back to America to face the undefeated Mexican-American contender Chris Ariola. In a dominant performance, Vitali basically played with Ariola, making him quit after the 10th round. His next fight he went over to Switzerland and took on the undefeated American spoiler, Kevin Johnson, who ran all night taking Vitali the distance for the second time in his career. He then took on Polish contender Albert Sosnowski, knocking him out in the 10th round after a dominant performance. His next fight he went the distance for the third time in his career with a dominant unanimous decision against former two-time heavyweight champion Shannon Briggs. Many people, including myself, felt that that fight should have been stopped, as it practically ruined Briggs' career and had him out of the ring for five years. His next fight, he took on what hilariously in retrospect was considered one of his toughest challengers at the time, Olympic gold medalist from Cuba, Odlanir Solis. I can remember so many people before that fight picking Odlanir Solis to win and acting as if he was going to go in there and expose Vitali. Hilariously, Vitali went on to knock Solis out in one round after basically landing one clean right hand. Solid tried to get back up and his knee basically gave way, and the fight was over pretty much before it started. In a sickeningly one-sided beating, Vitali went on to stop Adamek in the 10th round. After beating Adamek, he took on former British and Commonwealth champion Derek Chisora, schooling him over 12 rounds, going the distance once again. His final fight took place in Moscow, Russia later that year, with a 4th round TKO over future WBA champion Manuel Char. So how good was Vitaly Klitschko? How would he have done in today's era, or any era besides his own? Vitaly Klitschko, in my opinion, was one of the best, most well-rounded heavyweight champions of all time. Sadly though, due to a few circumstances, his resume is severely lacking. This is partially due to his four-year retirement during his physical prime, where his brother Vladimir basically took over for him and consolidated most of the belts, as well as defeating most of the best contenders at the time. But nonetheless, Vitali still, in my opinion, has a pretty respectable resume of his own. He barely lost any rounds for the majority of his career, and has one of the highest knockout percentages of heavyweight championship history. And let's be honest guys, his only two losses were due to injuries he sustained in the ring. He was ahead on points in both fights. He also fought into his 40s and had some pretty good wins against much younger fighters close to their primes. It's a shame we never got to see the Lewis rematch, and it's also a shame that we never got to see him gain momentum after his win over Danny Williams. In my personal opinion, due to Vitali's size, power, stamina, athleticism, and his awkward style that you rarely see at heavyweight, I personally think that he would have been an absolute handful in any era of heavyweight boxing. If he were in his prime today, against the likes of Wilder, Fury, and AJ, I would personally make him the favourite against any of them, and I think he could potentially be a dominant champion. I certainly think he would have been a handful. Thanks for watching guys, I really enjoyed making this video. Let me know what you guys think, stay tuned for more retrospective boxing videos. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section and I'll think about it. Thanks for watching, and God bless.